Hello everyone, today's video is specially made for the people at Weather News. They asked us to make a video detailing all the equipment that we use here in our studio. So without further ado, let's begin. The list I'll talk about today may not be entirely necessary and there can be cheaper options, so bear that in mind and don't go around burning through money for equipment that you might not even use often. Number 1. CPU here in the studio, we run a dual machine setup like the one you see on my right and the one on the left. One handles real-time workflows while the other is mainly used for non-real-time uh, workflows such as world building, rendering, etc. When we first started out in the virtual production scene, we were super conflicted about CPUs. There were just too many options, so I want to give a shout out to Joe and Folk. He helped me a lot in understanding what CPUs are better for what tasks. Shout out to you, man. So what CPU do we use here? We use the Threadripper 5955X and Intel's 14900 series. But listen, if you're planning on running a scene in real time, you should definitely go with the Intel one. The Threadripper has more cores but lower clock speeds for each single core. When compiling shaders and building lighting, the Threadripper is great, but when you're running a scene in real time, it is better to have higher single core clock speeds. Number two, GPUs. When it comes to GPU, just do yourself a favor and go with the 1590. But as the saying goes, do as I say, not as I do, we don't have a 1590. In our studio, we currently rock NVIDIA's A6000 series, which has a whopping 48 gigabytes of GPU memory, which is more than the 1590's 32 gigabytes and double the amount the 4090 provides. It goes without saying that raw GPU memory is not the sole deciding factor when running your virtual production workflow and that in many cases the 4090 outperforms the A6000. But with that said, the A6000 hasn't let me down once and the sleek form factor ensures that I have plenty of space inside the case since the A6000 is about half the thickness of the 4090. All in all, you don't need the A6000 to run your workflow. The 4090 will be just fine. Number 3. Capture Card Over the last 8 years, I have experimented with all kinds of capture cards. From Elgato to Aja and Blackmagic, I've had the displeasure of using all of them before settling on the GOAT. Blackmagic Decklink 8K. Do yourself another favor and just get this card, will you? I strongly advise you to go full SCI in your virtual production workflow. It may cost you a bit more, but scalability is really important. You cannot underestimate how often and fast you start scaling up, and in many cases, just a couple of months after it just started. I'm not going to go into the specifications of capture cards, but in summary, the Decklink 8K has four inputs that can also be used as outputs. It's like having four different capture cards into one. We run a single camera setup and still four inputs is not enough after you add things like hardware gears, output monitors, etc. This is what this baby looks like. Four inputs and one reference input. Each of the four inputs can be used as an input or output, making it perfect for our workflow. Number four, camera. We we're currently using the Ursa Mini Pro 12K, you do not need a 12K camera for a virtual production. If you're taking your camera outside, it doesn't hurt to have 12K, but uh, we only use this camera indoors, so we rely on the SDI outputs to run this through the computer. The Kier does not support 12K, it's a, 4, it's a 4K Kier, so it doesn't even make sense to have a 12K camera. So pros and cons of this camera, it's a little bit too noisy. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I think the, the biggest problem I have with the camera is the noise. And if you're doing like virtual production, if you're doing live, you, you can't have that noise because you can't, uh, you can't post process it. So the camera is a little bit on the noisier side and I don't like B-Roll since we only use it for real time rendering and don't really benefit from color grading. So there's that. Number five, Kier. We use Blackmagic's Ultimat 12 series in our studio. We currently have both the smaller and much cheaper 1080p version and the much bigger and way more expensive 4K version. So this is a small one. It's a 1080p, 1080p here. I think it's pretty affordable and does wonders. Here behind you have your background input that can be pictures or something uh, or live feeds, the program out, 
camera foreground, ethernet, and you also have SDI ports. Now let's take a look at the big boy. This is the Ultimate 4K. It's a beast, it's big, it's bulky, it's complicated to use, but it does everything you can imagine and some more. You got the power, double power outlet, and you have a bunch of in and outs. You have layers and layers. You can output this to a different monitor. You can have the feel and the mat, which is really important. One thing you need to bear in mind is that the smaller one does not have a fill and a mat out. They're combined, they're not independent. So if you want to run, uh, if you want to run it through Unreal Engine, you're not going to be able to do so. That's when you need a big one. But a different in price is huge. So I still recommend trying out the smaller one before you go and make a big investment in the big one. With that said, keying is a very complicated thing and there are many more things that impact the final result, such as lighting, sharp camera lens, lens vignetting, noisy camera, etc. Uh, etc. I could go on all day. Also, the Ultimate software menu is so complicated you might need a PhD in black magicery just to grasp it thoroughly. Number six, let's talk about lights. For the lights, we have, uh, we have the background lights that illuminate the green screen and then we have the ceiling lights that illuminate the talent's head plus it illuminates the floor because we do full body keying. And then on the front row here, uh, these are the talent lights that can illuminate the talent, talent's body from, uh, from face to, to feet. Number seven, audio. Over the years, I have used all kinds of microphones, especially wireless ones. And yes, I almost forgot. If you're moving around during your shoot, I definitely suggest you use wireless microphones instead of shotgun mics. I have always despised wireless microphones. Rode, DJI, you name it to me, that's a personal opinion, but they all sound like crap. But that changed when I met DD Theos. It was love at first sight. It's pricey, but love is priceless. This is the, this is the microphone right here. DD Theos. I just completely love this microphone. I'm not gonna go into specifics uh, of how it works, why it's better. I just like the sound. I like how sturdy it is, how flawless it is, how far away you can be from it, how there can be walls in between you and the microphone and still works. You can take, you can, you can check it up on the internet. But I really like this microphone every single time. I never go back to using uh, Rode or DJI wireless microphones. For audio interface, we use the Rodecaster Pro. We use the Rodecaster Pro for audio interface. This is a beast. This is a second version. We also had the first version here for uh, for a podcast, but the second version, the menus, the effects. I think this is a perfect audio interface for any job. If money is not the problem, go with the Rodecaster Pro too. Number eight, 3D software. What do we use here in our studio? We use Unreal Engine paired with Eximetry. Yes, maybe you have never heard of Eximetry, but it's a really powerful, really good, easy to set up, not easy to use software. Why do we use Unreal with Eximetry? Eximetry is more focused towards uh, broadcasting, not uh, action movies uh, or things of the sort. If you're just doing broadcasting, head talk, or if you have a small setup, uh, it's perfect for, 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 for for this kind of uh, virtual production workflow because you can uh, put your UE5 scene into Eximetry and do lots of uh, overlays and it's like a, a hub for your uh, virtual production. So I, I, I recommend this software, although I have a lot, I have a, a lot of, there, there are a lot of things that I, that, I, that I don't like about it. The price, how, the the menu how the the benchmarks of the gpu and cpu benchmarks don't make any sense at all you might see that your gpu is overloaded but when actually it's not and when it is you might show that it's not it's it's a it's it's, it's a little it's a little funky and also there are lots of um for people who mainly use unreal engine scenes into x imagery there are a lot of errors that can just completely waste your your whole day you know, your, your whole day's work and there you have to go to forums and you have to to find the answer by yourself that can delay a lot of your work and that, even if you're experienced with the software you might often come across errors that are 
unseen and uh, you don't really have customer service that can help you fast with these kinds of things you have to rely on the community and i think for for a software that costs that much money it should be more optimized way more optimized and it should work better number nine tracker you don't need a tracker if you're doing weather stuff and not moving around too much Eximetry can have a fake kind of tracking that works really well if you're not as long as you're not moving at crazy camera angles you do not need a tracker but if you do don't use anti-latency go with retracker bliss retracker bliss we don't have it here but i've talked to the boss he's a uh, super attentive attentive retracker bliss's boss i forgot his name but he helped me a lot even though i don't have the hardware uh and the this tracker is praised by a lot of people and it's kind of affordable Anti-latency, I'm not gonna comment negatively on it, but customer service is hell. Don't care about you. So I will never buy anti-latency again. But with that said, we have the anti-latency anti uh, floor plan and it works pretty well. It's very complicated to set up. It's really complicated. There are lots of problems. Customer service is never online. They're in Russia or I don't know. But uh, when it works, it's really good. Number 10, hookah. I cannot work without this. I smoke it, I smoke this every time. I smoke it every time. It makes me, helps me relax, it helps me calm down, and it kills me faster. So that was it. This was a full equipment list that we have here in our studio. There are many more things that I didn't cover that I may have forgotten, but essentially that's what you need to make virtual production happen. You don't need to spend that much money. There are many alternatives, but that's what we use. And you can take some reference. And if you have any comments and if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. See you next time.